Hello, and welcome to the first segment of the 2021 KCA Arts Showcase. KCA will be releasing four segments every Thursday at 7 p.m. during the month of May. Each segment will feature performances from our theater community. We will also reveal the final architectural plans for the theater and take you on a tour of the current Beale Street Theater. In addition to showcasing all that KCA has to offer, these segments will also be a fundraiser to help push the new BST design plans into reality. Thanks to Angle Homes and the Angle family, all donations during the fundraiser will be doubled, up to $100,000. To make a donation, click on the Donate Now button on your screen, or go to our website at BealeStreetTheater.com. As part of our fundraising activities, we have a silent auction for you to bid on. Items have been donated by generous local sponsors and are on display at the Art Hub. The Art Hub is open Tuesday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. To make your bid or to learn more about the items up for auction, you can visit our website at BealeStreetTheater.com. Speaking of the Art Hub, behind us you can see some great art created by artists local to Kingman and Mojave County. Our first video introduces you to our gallery director, John Van Vliet, as he walks us through the Art Hub Gallery and tells us more about how art comes to life. We appreciate all the hard work John and his artists who work with him do, and we are grateful for creating these amazing visual art experiences for us. Today I am at the Art Hub in our new gallery show, A Growing Season. Um, the Art Hub is host to four gallery shows per year. Um, we started back in 2017 hosting visual art gallery shows every month down at the 208 Beale Street building. Um, and then in 2019 we had the opportunity to move up a little closer to the action here at 402 East Beale Street and uh, we were excited to do that. So now we have four gallery shows that we mount every year. And today we're going to introduce you to some of our artists, our gallery director, John Van Vliet, artist Pamela Maloof, and Jim Federico. So we'll turn the time over to them. Hi, I'm Pamela Maloof. I'm a film editor, but I retired recently and I moved to Kingman, Arizona. I started on Star Wars, believe it or not. That was one of the first movies I worked on, and when it won the Oscar for the Academy Award, the film editor thanked me on television, on the Oscars, and that kind of kicked off my career. So, interestingly, I started cutting film, and now I'm cutting fabric. And that's where I've gone to fabric and textile art. And I have a lot of fun with it, and I've been pretty successful and had a lot of encouragement here in Kingman. So it's really wonderful that Kingman has an art gallery and KCA and the Real Street Theater. It's one of the reasons that I chose to retire here, because I wanted to make sure I came to a community that had some arts and theater, and I've been delighted to see it growing. This is three layers, and I made foam underneath here so it would look like it had dimension. I actually sewed on the big pieces with monofilament thread and then to make sure they wouldn't fall off I put on glue behind them. And these are little 3D flowers. Obviously this is a plant. This bird is stuffed with the doll stuffing and I've got beads sewn on and there's embroidery to make the edges look uh, more defined. The butterflies have bead backs and then it, they are also stuffed and they have metal inside so that you could get the three dimension. One of the great things about Kingman is that we do have KCA because I really feel that it's great that people in this town are getting to see a better and better art gallery. Well, the other day I was at the dentist and believe it or not, the gal grew up in Kingman spent her whole life here, and she said to me that she was so surprised and thought it was so neat that the Kingman 
art gallery here at the Art Hub was like a real gallery, she said. She couldn't believe that Kingman has a real gallery. And I was really happy to hear her say that. It shows how much it's improved and gotten better. And more and more people are buying art. It's more successful. And it's really wonderful to see that happen to this community. Hi, I'm Jim Federico. I'm from Southern California originally. I moved to Kingman here about six, seven years ago. We bought a ranch about 20 years ago and built a, a straw bell home pretty much out in the middle of nowhere south of Kingman. I got involved in the arts here, um, just happened to walk into the old gallery here in town and was really impressed with uh, what was happening. It was, it was a new beginning. I've been an artist for most of my life. I've got a couple of different art design degrees and stuff. And um, I was really happy to find out that they were looking for volunteers, et cetera, and to be involved in an organization that I felt was starting to grow. And I'm very proud that I've been with this group since, when I, since I've been here. I've been thinking it's been four years that I've been with the group. Um, with that said, my other background was I was raised in Southern California in Hawthorne, California, where the Beach Boys grew up and played. My brother and sister went to school with them. I grew up in the aerospace industry area in the 50s and 60s uh, when surfing was huge. Um, the things I loved about California inspired me to be an artist was the missions, the landscape, the surf, the deserts. And um, it all played a lot of harmony inside of me to become an artist that I am today. And so uh, it's led me to work with my art and uh, bring it into the gallery and I'd like to explain a little about this piece. I worked with uh, found materials. Uh, I can literally find something anywhere and probably incorporate it into one of my pieces. We call these muñecas and in Spanish muñeca means dolls. It was just a fancy name to use to catch your attention. I find out here in this part of the world people don't speak very much Spanish. But with, with that, um, we're educating them. So um, the, the, the piece here is called Night Watchman. And um, he's got his throne, he's got his key, and he's got the head is a camera. And it's, it doesn't work, but it's leading to better ideas. But with that, um, they're a lot of fun to make. Uh, there's times when I get kind of blocked, and I don't know what to do, so I'll go work on another piece, and then I'll come back. But these are saguaro ribs, small saguaro ribs, and a stone that I put petroglyphs on. And um, the donut was really fun. It was fingernail polish from the glaze. Uh, I sold a few of these here at the gallery and at other locations in the Southwest. And they seem to be popular. And I will continue to make peace until I die. I'm John Bentley, I'm somehow the director of this gallery. Uh, we're at the Kingman Center for the Arts. I've been playing director here for a little over a year. Uh, this is our newest location. We've got a terrific spot here in the center of Kingman, and we've got an incredible amount of, of art in here from this wonderful local artists. And we're actually even getting people who are sending their art in from New York, North Carolina, and down south in Arizona. So we're actually getting a huge amount of attention from outside our own boundaries, which I guess makes people like this place. So I came on as director, like I said, a little over a year ago. Um, my background uh, as an artist is I've been an artist from day one. I actually enlisted in the Air Force and they made me an artist. And I was like, okay, this is a great gig. And so I was uh, I played artist in there for four years and a draftsman. Uh, I got out, uh, I went to work for a graphics company in, in New Jersey, and then I turned around and left New Jersey and went out to California to enlist in the Disney Animation School. I lasted about a semester and a half and basically got drafted and was asked to go up and work at Lucasfilm on Empire Strikes Back. And that kicked off my film career, which is a good thing to kick off your film career with. Uh, about 60 features later, I finally retired. Uh, and when we were looking around a place to retire, uh, the joke was I put a movie camera over my shoulder and I kept walking east and so someone said, what is that thing? And I said, it's a place to retire. But actually, Kingman was terrific. We came into town and it had a little art gallery here. We were like so excited to find this place. 
And you know, it's a beautiful location. It doesn't snow a whole lot, which is very important. And, uh, and they actually had this growing community of artists. And so the short version is that next thing I know, we bought a house and we're living here. I'm bringing art down. And then I started complaining like I usually do. And that's how I ended up being the director. And so far, it has been just an amazing response from the local artists. Uh, I can't tell you how impressed I am on every single show, and the stuff just keeps getting better. Besides playing director, I also am trying to maintain my output as, a, as an artist. Uh, in the past, uh, in my career, I have been an animator. I've been what we call a flat art animator. I've done 3D animation. Uh, I was a designer with a lot of stuff. And I ended up doing an awful lot of visual effects work. And towards the latter end of my career, it was less actual drawing. It was more just straight design work. And I got an opportunity to ship all sorts of different places. I thought I was retired, and a year ago they asked me to come back and go to Hungary for a while. So, it's being in the, the art community, film business, it's sort of like working for the Mafia, you don't really ever retire. So, anyway, what I've got here, this is called a light painting. And this is uh, part of what I learned on how to do light painting from, is way back on Tron. Uh, my boss was a gentleman named Richard Taylor, who used to work a lot of commercials, and he was always talking about painting with light. So when we did Tron, it was a real education in how to manipulate light. Years later, I'm still in touch with Richard, and when I first retired, I went out and went out into the desert, and I would spend hours out in the desert, running around, completely dressed in black like a ninja, and just the art of invisibility, and painting all this stuff in light with flashlights and little LED wands and everything else. I've had a ball. It's, uh, it's what we call uh, working without adult supervision. So that's my contribution to this particular show. I've also been doing a lot of sculpting and stuff, but this is the big one. <laughs> one of the things that's always asked is, what is really art? And what is creativity? And uh, I think it was Albert Einstein who basically said, creativity is intelligence having fun. And one of the things I love about coming down here is we got a lot of really smart people having a lot of fun. So this is, the gallery is showing off how, how wonderfully smart some of these people are and how they're stretching themselves. Art is, art is probably the closest thing to a universal language. Uh, almost anybody from any culture can look at a piece of art and, and it's going to communicate with them. There is no language barrier, and it can even completely transcend time because good art from like 4,000, 5,000 years ago is still wildly entertaining. We still have people coming and finding art in caves that they know is 20, 30,000 years old and getting truly excited about it. Now, that is a time machine of art. That's how well it communicates. Nothing else is like that. Language is still a, a fairly new invention. But art, even back when guys were just like grunting and you know killing off you know mastodons and stuff, they were still making art in the caves, and that's the stuff we're going for today. Because it's really interesting that cultures, they come, they go, they live, they die, they grow, and the thing they always leave behind of great value is the art. And when you go to almost any museum throughout the world, that's where everybody goes. They go to see the art museums and see the stuff that's been left over from. 5,000, 20,000 years ago, or last week. That is absolutely magic. And so we're getting our own magic right here in Kingman. This is terrific. So we're getting stuff. Who knows which piece is going to be there in the future that's going to be that time machine. One of the things that's, that you always hear uh, is, what good is art? What, what good is it going to do us? What, what good is it for these people? Why should I send my kid to you know, study art in school? And a lot of people are really down. They don't see uh, a 
reason for it, but, but art is incredibly important. It's, if you have art, it improves everything from the ground level up. Good art and, and understanding of art creativity, it's the basic DNA that makes us who we are and allows us to grow as, as a people and as a culture. You've got to have that. Art and creativity can make people think beyond their own boundaries. It, it basically brings in thought processes from all over the place. When you have good art that's coming especially from other lands, people are looking at it, they're getting little kickstart ideas, and it makes them think outside the box and it tries new things. People forget that a lot of the innovations, especially in our present culture, that have been wildly successful, and this is why art is really important, it, the art will improve your economy. And people go, how's that? I'm not going to go buy a Picasso and go, Let's go back and look at, you know, the iPhone. Everybody goes, well, what a great piece of technology. This is great. But they don't remember, and they keep forgetting, Steve Jobs, while an innovator, he was actually a really great designer, and it was art-based. He came up with something that was such great design that everybody wanted to hold it in their hand. You know, it's also great that you get the, you know, it's an incredibly powerful computer, but he was a good designer, and he understood that something that you wanted to have with you that was nice, that could handle, was something that would change the world. Now there's an industry on iPhones that brings in, you know, the budgets of small countries. It's phenomenal what the, what the art could do, and it's all because he was art-based. Now you look at good art design, look at cars. Cars are a great example. You know, Americans have led, led the pack in really interesting car design. And you take that and juxtapose it against art, technology, the art and technology combo from the old Soviet bloc nations. When we had artists designing cars here, we got the Camaros, we got the Firebirds. In Italy, you got the Lamborghinis. You know, it's like wonderful stuff. In the Soviet bloc, you've got the Trabant, which is probably the worst car ever made. They're ugly, they smoke, they break down. Good designers, they're doing form follows function. That's art, the art is allowing that's the art of the designer, and they are allowing the product to be improved. Now, we can go and get 200,000 miles out of a car. You get an old Soviet block thing, that's about 30,000 miles, and it's tin can on fire. So that's the difference. In the old days, art and design, when we were in early aviation, there was no technology for, the, for designing airplanes. And the pilots all had this saying, if it looks good, it'll fly good. And the art was actually designing the airplane. And it's no accident today that the coolest looking airplanes are also the ones that fly really fast and are really efficient. So how's art gonna affect our local community? Well, local artists, they're gonna improve their thinking. And when their thinking process expands, they're gonna think of better ways to do stuff. And that means, Every little thing they're doing is going to get better. They're going to improve it. And that's going to bring up the efficiency of everybody and everything. That means the economy improves. So basically, you are, by opening up everyone's thinking process, you are improving the entire community and we shall all prosper. You have to have good art or you are just going to become slugs. <laughs> this, this is. This is the most important thing you can have is a good art base in your community. And this is gonna pay off for years to come. I'm so delighted these people came in here and have shared the work with us. And if you wanna be involved in the Cambrian Art Gallery, and we would love to have you here, it's real simple. Send us an email. At gallery at kingmanarts.org. We will send you all the information on how to submit your art and the process and we look forward to having you do that and your art too can be on the wall one of these days. And I hope to see you real soon. Thank you for watching. You have until Saturday to come down and see the current show, A Growing Season, at the Art Hub, 402 East Beale Street. Our next art gallery show will debut June 24th with the theme of sound and or motion. We encourage you to come experience live visual art from the team community. Thank you. Thank you.
Tonight, we also want to introduce you to a couple of choreographers that work with our productions. This next video will feature Miss Julie Steed. Hi, my name is Christina Nicholson, and I'm the Executive Director of Kingman Center for the Arts. And I'm Julie Steed, and I'm the owner of Project Movement. And Julie is one of the choreographers that works with us at the Bill Street Theater. So we're going to take a few minutes and talk to her about um, what she does and the importance of choreography in a production and dance in general as part of, of culture that we are trying to bring to team in. Um, I've danced since I was a child and um, it was one of my favorite things because I could express myself in ways that was just bigger than what I was. I was kind of shy when I was a kid and but dancing took me to a different level and it instilled a self-confidence within myself that I'm so excited that I have now in my life. And I want to bring that to kids as they are younger. And I teach kids through lots of love, lots of encouragement, and there's just something about putting dance into your life. Um, and I've watched these kids gain their self-confidence that will help them to get through their life. And so that's why it's so important to me to bring. Great. Um, I know we've seen the impact that you've had on a lot of the kids that work with you at Project Movement, and they also come out to do our productions. And yeah, we share a lot. <laughs> um, we, yeah, we both impact those kids in such positive ways, and it's, it's a great thing to, to watch happen. Um, so tell us about uh, a couple of the shows that you've done with Bill Street Theater and, and maybe a favorite memory or experience with that. The very first thing that I was asked to do was Thriller. And Thriller has turned into a huge thing here in Kingman. And we started off with, I think, maybe 15, 16 dancers. And now we're up into the 60s, and it's just grown. And people look forward to it every year. So that was kind of the start of it all. And then Christina then came to, to me about Seven Brides for Seven Brothers to kind of help. Yeah. <laughs> and then it turned into my life, okay? But it was such a fabulous moment to meet people on a different level and to watch these men, these ordinary men that you wouldn't even know had these hidden talents or maybe they didn't have talents but we found out what they could do and we, we just accentuated them. And we bonded to people. There's something about singing and dancing and late night practices, things like that, that just bond you to people. And I will forever be grateful for that experience of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. I was, I thought I had made it. <laughs> you know, but that one. And then and I got to work with Andy Balstead, and she's not here anymore, but oh, such fun. And then, was it the next year we did Bye Bye Birdie, or was it two years later? Um, I think it was the next year. Well, I'm trying to we then did Bye Bye Birdie, and it was even greater. And I just didn't think life could get better on the stage, and it was. It was phenomenal. And again, we had more kids this time. Before it was adults, and this one was more working with kids. And I'm a great Chris Cook. And he's so excited to be Yeah, I love working with him. He's talented. And um, teaching him to dance, teaching these kids, or some of their natural talent that came in, it was phenomenal. It was so great. So I love both of those um, productions, and they were, they were quite the hit. and then um, bring out talents that they didn't know that they had or 
or to, to create choreography that really um, is accessible to people. We can make anybody look good. <laughs> she can. Uh, that's including good. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us, so we are raising money to bring a performing arts venue into Cayman. And can you talk a little bit about the importance of that and how that would impact what you do? Huge. Um, first off, Kingman is a historical town. Kingman needs a venue downtown that will bring in performers and that people can watch shows on a regular basis. A town that has an art center turns the town into a whole different place. It becomes people will flock to it. And we need that here in Kingman for one. Now for me, I am always looking for a venue to perform. Um, with my with my group, with my Dance Divas, Project Movement's Dance Divas. And right now I'm having a hard time finding a place because of COVID or because of graduations and things like that. And I know I could always have a place that's authentic and brings in a whole different feel than just your auditorium. There's something about downtown that can bring just a way cool vibe. Um, to the people who are attending. Yeah. I've been in there and I'm excited to see. You actually performed cool. in there. We nice. did. We filmed. We filmed in there and we're now just going to be produced um, in two weeks. It's been two years, but it's coming. <laughs> and um, no, we went in there because we wanted to. Um, we wanted to show places of downtown, but especially Beale Street. I, I have a very fond place in my heart for the place. And I'm, I love a lot of things and I love a lot of people, but there's only a few things that are real, real dear to me. Fine arts is one of them. Yeah. And I know, I mean, we share the same pain of trying to find venues to perform in. Yes. Performance. And as you say, you know, the auditorium brings us, it's, the high schools are great facilities, but with the professional performing arts venue, we can add that element of production value that you can't get in. in yeah, and that you're in control of the yeah. sound, you're in control of the, 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 the ambiance, <laughs> the lights, the yours. And being able to, to do some of the aerial effects that you love. Yeah, right? <laughs> We both appreciate what each other does in the, the community and see how that impacts the lives of the people that live here. It's, it's a great thing. It's been such a pleasure to be in the beginning process of it all to see it come from the grassroots and then make its way up. And to watch this dream come about is phenomenal. I've been here for almost six years. And so I've seen it, it was shortly after that that y'all started talking about it. Yeah, that's and about right, it was about five years ago. Yeah, and I am like, just to watch it all come to reality is a dream come true for me and for this town. I love Kingman, great, great people here. And it's fun to think back to, to the little roots of Thriller and, and some of these really amateur productions that we started with and to see where it's gone. <laughs> and to know where we're going. Yeah, it's gonna be it's good, it's gonna be so big. We appreciate you taking the time to watch um, this interview today and check out our website and make a donation for us. All of the donations this year are matched by Angle Homes um, dollar for dollar, so your money goes twice as far and it will do amazing things for Kingman. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the first of four segments for our KCA Arts Showcase. Remember, you can make a donation by clicking on the Donate Now button or by stopping into the Art Hub to place a bid on one of our many silent auction prizes. Make sure to visit the KCA Facebook page again next Thursday, May 13th, for our second segment where we will showcase more of Kingman's art talent.